training room. Because we have panels and stuff yeah. going on while they're away for a week. I'm going to count down five, four, three, two. Good afternoon, welcome to Show Studio. So London Fashion Week is coming to an end, and today is the big Burberry Day, quite um, <coughs> expected, not expected, awaited by many people. It's apparently the big show in town, uh, because it's the first show by Riccardo Tisci, Riccardo Tisci of Givenchy fame, Riccardo Tisci that was quite a surprise when it was announced. Everybody was expecting, you know, someone more British, more English. Uh, but here we are, finally, the day has arrived, and before um, starting to discuss Burberry and what we expect, I would like this lovely panel of experts to introduce themselves, starting from Taylor. Hi, my name is Taylor, and I'm a freelance creative consultant. Hi, my name is Anna, I'm a stylist and the founder and creative director of ELB Denim. Hi, I'm Anastasia, and I'm a curator and writer contributing to Days, Day D, Show Studio, and other publications. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ben Freeman. I run Ditto, which is a publishing company, and I'm creative consultant on Days Beauty. Okay, so as you can see, we have people that hopefully know what they're talking about. <laughs> so, um, first thing uh, first. So, as we all know, that Ricardo already marked his territory by reviewing the logo, uh, the typesetting, and the check, the famous Burberry check. He redesigned it with Peter Saville. It's all over town in London. There are teddy big, gigantic teddy bears. Instagram, it's full of it. Uh, there are t-shirts. Um, I think there is some in the new store in Regent Street. And I'm saying this because um, Marco Gobetti, who's the CEO of Burberry now, uh, when he released this strategy on BOF, he said, uh, Burberry needs to go back to be real luxury. So they want to rebring it up where you know, at the same level of the Gucci, level of the Gucci's, the Louis Vuitton, etc. But then that's a little bit contrasting with what we have seen up to today, in, you know, in these past two weeks. And of course, it's not a mistake. Of course, it's strategic. Ricardo is known from being a champion of streetwear, but he did real luxury in Givenchy. So I'm expecting a sort of a play with both, a mixture. Who wants to? Tell me what they think. Come on, guys. I think that um, I think that capsule collection's a decoy, and it's going to be different. I think that's what I'm expecting. So more fashion, what are, more, more fashion, luxury. more luxury. Yeah. That's what I'm. That's my. That's my prediction. Just gut feeling. Yeah. Or do you have some inside information? No, no, it's my gut feeling. <laughs> <laughs> and I think. Uh, I don't know, I think it would be, but I mean, it could just go the way Louis Vuitton's gone with Virgil, but I think he'll probably have, he'll probably have the sense to take it in a different direction. Okay, that's a good point. I, I was quite interested in, because obviously you can't, without seeing the clothes, the only thing you can judge is the strategy brand is taking, uh, in present, starting to present it, itself, as you said, with the logo, and then... The t-shirts. Uh, the t-shirts, yeah, I was quite intrigued about the choice of like influencers or like celebrities um, they've chosen already because Ricardo Tisci, he designed two looks for Beyonce's um, tour. Uh, one of them was uh, this all over Burberry check look, which kind of is a, you would expect that, but the second one I think was really pretty much, it looked exactly like Jim and she used to look. So it was like white, embroidered. It's his hand. Yeah, it is his hand, but also it was kind of slightly misleading. And then also I think Chance the Rapper wore some like streetwear, which was very much, I think like, uh, it was on Kanye's Instagram. So yeah, I think it was pretty much like, um, mm. Like the last collection, actually. Um, so it's it, you. It, it's not exactly. You, you can't really get where it's going uh, completely from this kind of. Tool. No, and it's also nice oh, before coming to you that I'm I'm quite happy that this is a live panel and we haven't seen or read anything before. So there's no influence and the su surprise is real. But again, you know, we will not. It's very hard to be sure of the direction until because it can it can really surprise us. I think it's going to be a real statement of design for sure. I think, you know, it, trying to move away from, I think it won't be just all completely streetwear, even um, when you look at something that changes so dramatically from the previous creative director to the new one, you've yeah. got to make a stand, you've got to make a statement, otherwise, 
someone was saying to me today, oh, normally the first collection done by a new creative director is a bit more of a kind of, you know, like a clean sheet, a, a blank canvas, something not to make a statement. I said, well, I don't agree with that. I think you've got to, if you're going to go from chalk and cheese or you've yeah. got to make something that is equivocal. And also you've had all the hype with the print and the logo and it also has to match that hype. And whether it's is streetwear or not, I think it's going to be something that we're, it's going to be polemic. Everyone's going to love it or hate it. You're not going to be able to find two people together that says the that same thing. That says the same thing, yeah. What do you think, Taylor? I think it's going to lean more towards streetwear. Oh. I think if you look at... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Good, I, I love this. I, I, th I think f f for me, from like a, a research perspective, looking at what Gabetti said about the strategy of the brand mm. and is trying to... Um, emulate similar plans activated by like Gucci, Zulu, Louis Vuittons, where they are acknowledging the luxury and the streetwear market a bit more. And then um, TG's release of the t-shirt and the hoodie um, mm. through Instagram and WeChat, which I think is like one of the most genius marketing movements this year from a big fashion house. I think that he is, has an understanding of the consumer and the way that we consume the goods, um, whether that's purchasing them or just looking at them and then wanting them. I'm a bit more interested to see whether he can understand how how we want to cons what clothes we want to consume so is he going to be able to marry his creative style and direction without taking it too far away from Burberry that we kind of don't see Burberry in it a bit more well b before going into that which is interesting I would like to um, say something about when you say you know uh, Gobetia knowledge and Gucci and Louis Vuitton I think they are two very different way of approaching streetwear. Uh, Virg I mean Louis Vuitton by Virgin, because mm -hmm. Louis Vuitton is still Nicolas Jesquier. I mean, yeah. the, but anyway, let's say the men's. That's more of the real streetwear as, you know, the sportswear, the streetwear, while what Alessandro Michele does is more acknowledging what the grassroots wants, what the people want to wear. And, but then it goes to, I mean, they have gowns that are 40 grand because they hand embroider and they're yeah. all by streetwear. And I think that's probably more the direction that Tishi will take, you know, including the hoodie, but then it can go up to... Oh, most definitely. I think what... He, which is <coughs> different than Virgil, I think. Yeah, I think what... But I think that just comes down to the fact that, like, Tishi is actually a designer and I don't necessarily think that Virgil is on the same, yeah. the same level, same scope. I think that... I would say that Tishi is an artist and more like a fine artist. And then, I mean, Virgil's roots are streetwear, are graphic design, yeah, exactly. are, and you're not going to expect him to like, create like the most amazing couture collection ever. No, exactly. Um, well, Tishi can do a but couture he can, collection, and that's, and that's what he did. but a knowledge of modernity and relevance. Yeah, but that's what he, that's what he did while at Givenchy, was he, he managed to make it relevant with a younger demographic without taking away from the artwork and the couture. He still made like the absolutely gorgeous like evening wear and the ball gowns but still also made product that would sell out in, in minutes yeah. and it would be seen on streetwear icons. It was that Rottweiler t-shirt, that was the... Rottweiler, the shark print, yeah. the Bambi, like it was, I was just... Yeah, I was saying I saw someone when I was walking here wearing a sweatshirt. Would like today? Yeah, yeah today. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen it on anybody. It's going to come back recently. into popularity. But I also think the colour palette that he's done previously, how will that work with the colour palette of Burberry, which has been quite of those muted pastel colours? Mm and then you mean being black and white. Christopher's Christopher's, the, okay. the traditional Burberry palette being mm -hmm. whether we're going to have a complete black and white collection or where those colours are going to be, there's going to be any heritage. I see black, white and red when I think about the colours of Ricardo. And the floral, yeah. and yeah. but there would always predominantly black and white and then you had a Spot print or yeah. something. Yeah. There's got to be some element of, there's got to be some element of Burberry that stays, That will stand that there, yeah, yeah. So I guess what I was going to say so? about... I, th I think it would be sensible, but I think in, in yeah. terms of Louis Vuitton against Burberry, I think that Louis Vuitton have been quite smart about this stuff for a long time, and Burberry have been sort of dragged into it, kicking and screaming a bit more. I don't think they've been as sort of savvy about where they sit in popular culture as Louis Vuitton have for, for quite a long time. So I think that comes from a confidence thing, because um, I think that Gabetti's biggest issue is going to be trying to cement Burberry as a luxury mm a luxury brand, whereas Louis Vuitton, there's no question about it. It's not like, oh, is, is it, is it? But it's funny you say that because actually Louis Vuitton makes probably three quarters a big figure, but a lot of its revenue with the canvas, which is all about luxury. I mean, it's, it's sold quite expensive, mm -hmm. but you know, the LV canvas and yet it's, 
you know, it is a luxury brand, but it's nine billion, eight billion, so I don't know. I, I think. <sighs> I think if you ask people, though, it's yeah, yeah. number one. And, that, and that's at the end of the day, that's all that matters yeah. from a market. But it's not her mess, it's not that kind of luxury. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah, I just think that that's probably going to be their biggest distinction, is trying to get far enough away from high-end streetwear mm. to be regarded as a luxury brand while still doing high-end streetwear. Was Burberry ever considered a luxury brand? I think maybe when it started, like, like, like it was 1821? Yeah, I don't know. I think I that big, it would have been it would have been like bespoke. It would have been what we'd have known couture. The British have a different relationship to luxury to the French, so I don't think you can compare it. I don't think that British people have, by and large, seen luxury in the same terms because we have a we have a class system, and we have all sorts of things that that change that dynamic that doesn't exist so much. So where does Burberry stand in the class system? That's a big question. I mean, it's kind of Sorry. been all over the place, hasn't it, really? It's, it's been, been taken very, by both, yeah. isn't it? When people start, you, you, you buy it into the brand by taking something from the check, yeah. and then your head-to-toe check. Yeah, there was, I mean, when, when Angela Arendt, probably was still, it was Rosemary Bravo, maybe, I don't know if you are very young, so I don't know if you were around, but when she took over, Burberry was suffering this, having gone down and having been called ch for chaves, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And she did an amazing job. And Christopher did an amazing job with her. And then Angela Arendt to reposition it in fashion more than, because also, you know, I think luxury and fashion and branding are different things, yeah. but let's try to be not too pedantic about words. But um, I think they did a good job and they repositioned it in a fashionable way. And then I think the mistake was for Christopher to take over all the roles. But that's a long story. We discussed that in length. And, and Marco Gobetti is probably one of the best CEOs around. If someone can do the same work that Marco Bizzari did at Gucci, that's Marco Gobetti. Mm. And I think Riccardo Tisci was a brilliant choice. I still think that he tried Phoebe, but, she's, Phoebe, but she said no. But Because mm -hmm. Givenchy, he, I don't know, it's he did, tripled it with, and tripled the, he did it with Ricardo, the business, but he also did yeah. Celine with Phoebe. Yeah. Don't mm. forget that it was Marco Gubetti who did yeah. Celine with Phoebe I at the beginning. So. I feel like he's got a bigger role to play than the, any design he would have chosen. I think that yeah. if you've got someone like Marco Gubetti like at the helm, you know, a lot it's, of the hard work is like done. It's like Gucci. I mean, Alessandro is essential, but don't forget that that CEO gave him freedom, found mm. him, and said, let's do it. Let's. So when you said they will probably keep some Burberry in it, you know, if you take the Gucci school of the past three years, they totally got it. Taught, well, using using some double G's and some green and white and red. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, that's the, compared that could, to the Frida's Gucci, there's it's not that the green, that. white, and red is. I think that's all you really, you know, you need just some of those kind of key things to remain consistent. And if you just scrap everything completely, yeah. you know, the tart and the monocle, the, the everything. Well, but the most recognizable thing of Burberry was the check, yeah. and it's gone. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. So if the most recognisable thing about Gucci is those colours, then th they've kept those. You know, yeah, they kept there those. There is a consistency. I know it's a really little, seemingly a little thing, but it's not. It's really the thing that's cemented in everyone's. What would be Burberry consistency since the check is gone? Well, I mean, they kept the well, colour palette, though. Yeah. Colour palettes, yeah. 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 Quite interested, actually, yeah. in um, the comparison of Gucci, because um, you mentioned that they have gowns and everything, but also Gucci did that Dapper Dan collaboration, which is oh, yes. basically... Yes, many others. Which is basically the young artists. this kind of bootleg play approach, which I find really interesting, because uh, I think last collection, um, Christopher's last collection was also this play on like um, the old bootlegs of Burberry and everything. So I'm just wondering how can this model, which Gucci uses, actually work for Burberry? Can it be a little bit of this play, but also... I don't think it will be the same model. I think it will be the same approach to having the guts to do something that they think will work. Did it make sense what I said? Meaning, for me, it's the, it's the vision behind two men, in this case they're men, in that case as well, but anyway, two men that say, let's do it, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be the same model, but it has to be something gutsy. Yeah, mm. as we said, mm. it has to make a statement, because everyone's yeah. waiting for a statement. But the right statement, because some people make statements and... Well, I think, as we said, though, some people are going to say it's the right statement, some people are going to say it's the wrong one. Yeah, but then the figures... I remember at Gucci at the beginning, everybody was like, it doesn't sell, and then it's growing like yeah. crazy. So, you it's know, quite interesting history that will tell. Burberry made news with this um, 
burning of the what's it called? The, the, the stuff. Yeah, the, yeah. So that's interesting. Which everybody is doing. Except yeah, which everybody is doing. Out. But it's yeah. kind of an interesting addition to the conversation yeah. because we're talking exact, exactly about this mixing highs and lows and passion and this co coming back to luxury, coming back to being an exclusive product. So this together don't actually send a good message if you think of that. But um, Just so go ahead. Just, no, no. Um, when uh, Ricardo was appointed, he actually claimed that they're going to stop doing that as effectively yeah. as immediately, yeah. and as well as the use of fur. I thought it was interesting. Mm -hmm. It's obviously a big sticking point yeah, for a lot of, you know, people that aren't into fashion. Like, um, even my girlfriend talking about Burberry, it's like, oh, that's that brand that burns their stuff instead of giving, instead of seeing a yeah. poor person. Mm -hmm. in exactly. It. And I think that addressing that immediately and then addressing the use of fur has been like a real. You know, the stock. stock problem is it's, it's mismanagement, it's overproduction. Yeah, so yeah. Of course, if you, after the sales, after the friends and family and after everything, you either give it to charity, but then you risk to dilute the brand or you burn it, well, they have the which is what store. everybody has done. You have to produce yeah. less. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, I think it's, 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 it's all production. everyone sorry, wants. Oh, sorry. They have the outlet store in Hackney. You know, they're getting rid of those. Yeah, but then that goes yeah, to that getting rid of those. But I think it's also they don't want you produce a jacket that suddenly is super popular. They don't, but they hope it's popular, so they produce a thousand mm. because they don't want anybody to not yeah. not get it. But so scarcity can make a brand. Exactly. So if you have produced less and then you just reordered, you know, they're in control. I'm sure they can make you make more, but you just get people to wait for it. And people want to wait for things these days. Yeah. Well, I guess that's how Supreme or like with Man worked in the beginning. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's basically not having enough, and then this demand just grow, goes crazy. Yeah. It's like. And, and the idea of this is that they're going to go into doing drops now, so they'll yeah. drop. Then I think Which it, is very smart, and then <coughs> that will solve some some stock problem. I hope so. Hello. And I yeah. hope that everybody will do drops. That's why did it take so long? It's such a you want people thing. to want things as well. Yeah, but also you don't need to put everything in a store mm. one day and then for five months or mm. six months or four months. Then you need mid-season. Mm. It's becoming ridiculous. So mm. let's go back to you know basics and let's drop every other month so that's newness in the store people will come in you will produce in a more controlled way and you don't burn 38 yeah. million of stock i have to say I, do, I don't think burberry is something that anybody has ever seen as out of reach or desirable in a way that you can't get it and there was some you know i was reading some of the feedback on on instagram and people were saying that like, you know you can never not get a burberry thing there's, mm. no, there's nothing oh. that's unattainable, do you know what I mean? So and it needs I think to make it unattainable and then... Yeah, yeah. because yeah, also so that's less wasteful and better for, you know, better for everyone, really. People want what they can't have, it's the basics yeah. of human nature. And I just think it's the pressure also, newness all the time. Everybody wants what's new, what's new, but, but just also... Just make it new. Yeah, make it new, yeah. Anticipate something. By the way, this, uh, already what they do with this collection, uh, you probably know, but I'm also saying for people at home, they're going to do buy now, uh, see now, buy now, but in a smart way because it lasts 24 hours. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so again, you know, it's the rush to, to get it. I mean, that's, I know, it seems obvious, mm -hmm. but it's quite smart. So it's going to be only in the Regent Street store on Instagram and in on um, what is it called WeChat, you know, mm -hmm. the Chinese mm -hmm. social media. So, you know, that's quite smart because it, you probably don't create scarcity, but also, also, you find out what yeah. works. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so after that, you can produce the quantities according to what people came to us because they're not saying exactly what. Surely everything will do. go anyway, so we did with then the, they, we're not going to know. With the t-shirts, they um, all went. Which That's is what I mean, crazy. so in 24 hours. Because yeah, the, so the, the, the branding they use has no equity in it, there's no value or no power in it because it's, it's, it's a new brand that these consumers wouldn't have become associated with. Which for me, just before even knowing if you like it. Literally, you know? for me, it's absolutely incredible. <laughs> uh, the way that gabretti has gone about challenging the structure on the way that Burberry engages with their consumers and their, and their potential retail partners is what's going to push Burberry, I think, like up on par with the other luxury brands. I think it's going to be far more interesting than any of the clothes you'll see, just seeing the sheer shift mm -hmm. in such a short space of time. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be absolutely incredible. I think that's what I'm more excited yeah, to see then. It's going to be what? Do you think, pe I mean, do you think people are going to buy it even if they don't like it then? Of course, they, people so buy it's stuff they don't like anyway. But this is the thing, it's not, it's not a, like, 
people are told what to like. There's this sort of illusion here that somehow people are dictating what gets produced. And it's, def it's never been that way around. People will hear, people come to understand that it's what they want and then they'll buy it. And that's always, mm. I know it's cynical, but it is. No, I, I agree with you. And I don't even think it's cynical. I think it's realistic. But I also think that when you do uh, what they're going to do in the next 24 hours, you know, you can read some, some figures. You can read what's, it's starting, but we don't see anything. I can see it, but I can see grey. Oh, yeah. oh, Thank wow. you for the heads up, but it's, oh. it's very hard to so see. Whole... Oh, we have to do that? I mean, if you need It's a... very, very dark. Oh, it's like, if you move the things, we can see. Well, like... If you move it up. Well, watch out, because it's going to fall. Oh, here we go. <laughs> OK, there's more light, so let's see. We don't have... Do we have music? Do they have music? Oh, here we go. Can we hear music? by Massive Attack, composed for this show by Massive Attack. Mm. Sorry, Taylor, I'm happy to do that. And if you do that, you can see. It started with a Mac. Yeah. That's the Burberry yeah. sign. There we go. I wish we could hear the music. The lady's bopping to it, so she's obviously enjoying it. Very classic. Is that classic. the print on front of that? Very, yeah, that very, true. very classic. Where did you see the check? It was on the... Uh, on the scarf? Yeah, it's top. Oh. It's kind of sheer underneath it, from yeah. what I can see. <coughs> That's quite a statement to start with the Mac. I honestly was expecting that. that. Oh, look, we back, can see yeah. Nick and Charlotte. Could you see them? <laughs> we could see our own Nick Knight and his wife. <laughs> oh, great, thank you. No streetwear so far. No, but look, that's the old check. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is, I think, right? Wow, that's quite surprising. See, Nick and Charlotte. <laughs> oh, yeah. I like that tops, man. Mm. All completely, so I'm just mesmerized by it. No black and white. They completely no. built the it's venue, by the, the way. It's that tone, isn't it? It's the Burberry colours. The venue is derelict, and this is like, it's looking like a luxurious place. Mm. So it's completely built from scratch. Yeah. Sitting on... So that, is that one there? Is it the, the new load on the scarf around the waist, I think? It's very madame. It is. It's not very lady. It's not very millennial young. It's very. Well, but I, I guess that the thing about the Mac is that you can fire. take it out of context and you can wear it. Pale green one. Yeah, yeah. Pale green one's amazing. Yeah. That min bag is cold. Skirts and pants. No, 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 I'm loving that bag. Is that what you're sure about? No, yeah, it's not. It's not the print. I just wonder what that society of some. Look at the coat. There's too much to look at. I can't. <laughs> you see the same thing. I can't see any hint of the stuff we've been seeing. No, so far. it's a whole smoke and mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> it is luxurious. Mm. Very. That shirt's beautiful. And totally, in, totally, sort of in keeping. It's historically, yeah. Yeah, and it's very far from what I was expecting. Skateboard and a backwards baseball cap, literally. <laughs> <laughs> But let's see, which is still at the beginning. Whoa. Oh, that's the new logo. Yeah, in grey. That's nice. There's lots of uses of the scarves from the, from the history, the from history, from the archives. Of the, I think they, they seem to make up kind of waistcoats, or I'm not seeing the. Did we receive any notes? Stylies, product, no. A lot of Burberry beige. Mm. Tiny bit too much for my taste, but. Um, mm -hmm. There's a Burberry mm. logo on the cuff. That's right. Wow. Classic men tailoring. Pinstripe. <laughs> I think this is all a good call. 
do you think it's looking cool? I think it's a good, good shout. I think the chain, the pieces edged in chain are my favourite. Mm. It's maybe I feel I'm going to say something that I'm not sure is going to go down well, but I it's as if he was applying for the Chanel job. <laughs> I had a, I had a, I had a I thought about Chanel. I, I feel he's yeah. applying for yeah. the Chanel job with this. Yeah. <laughs> Just the jackets and the combinations and the I don't know that it's it, it, it all looks quite a little bit Chanel to me. But that I mean uh, a modern and more relevant Chanel, yeah. you know, like what Chanel should probably be. But also how we feeling with all these talks about luxury going millennial and things. There is like it's a, a gap in the market. This is going to my generation yeah, that like, I wouldn't wear because it would make me look old. For something different, for luxury not going millennial, but staying quite like safe. <coughs> yeah, definitely. I think, quite safe, safe I think even thing. millennials are probably getting sick of streetwear, to be honest, and you know, luxury. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If you wanna, if you're gonna pay that amount of money mm. for something, you're probably either that kind of person who likes that, or you want it to look like that to look quite understandable. Uh, yeah, no, I understand, but I, yeah, I th honestly, I'm a bit underwhelmed. It's also very close, you know. I really it's wanted all to love it. it. It's, it's, all, it it's all just close. It's it's like jackets and trousers. It's close. And, yeah, it's it's like. Mm -mm. Not exactly. So this is Ricardo Tisci. Yeah. Maybe there'll be some. I don't know. Maybe we end. don't see it well enough. It's quite hard. <laughs> it is. I'm. I don't know what to say. There you go. It's more. This music is obviously not the one that it's there, I guess. It's music for the internet, right? Or you think it's the music kind of that was one. composed for this? I have no idea. OK, now we go a little bit cooler. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. So it was in two phases. Well, they had some kind of weird bike lock belt things going on before. Mary Jane's. Yeah. Yeah, but it's more interesting. Come on. Yeah, this is amazing. Now we're talking. There's now the streetwear. T-shirts. Polka dots has been seen a lot during this season. Love the shoes. Yeah, much better than the shoes first. First shoes. It's a big show. There are many, many, many looks. It was about 85 last time. Wasn't it? Yeah, they always quite deep. The ratios, deep pockets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, this is more interesting. Mm. So it's it's interesting how he made a statement, a classic, what you were saying, you know. But do you think that's to kind of he make needs everyone to go, create oh, it's classic, that's and the then it's, boom. That's yeah, that blank that's what he did. Yeah, that's the blank statement yeah. within the same show. Yeah. That's what he did. He created the link, mm. and then he said, and now I'm me. going to show you, yeah. yeah. Oh, phew, I'm glad so that, go on, that, that this happened. Not the cowhide. No, the tassels. Mm. That Wow. Mm. <laughs> I love that. Do we want to say something? I'm looking forward to Don't seeing it, actually. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking, but it's, it's, it's so mesmerizing because you're seeing things from different angles all the time. Mm. But I'm really looking forward to seeing it, it's like individual images, so you can see, mm. seeing what some of the words are. And but one thing, I, 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 you know, it's obvious what he did now, it's more obvious, but 
even in in what he's is that a UK that's passport? passport. Yeah. Even in what he says, this is me. There's not one style or one signature. There are many. But maybe that's leaving options open to be able to take it into a different direction, however you want to. Yeah. And you could also try to appeal to everyone who might want to buy it. Yeah. So there's no, so there's, so there's no one brand. to say, so no one's going to hate it or love it. Everyone's going to like something <coughs> yeah. within it. But then also, I feel like you could really take it apart, and different parts of it could really go into different contexts mm. quite comfortably. Yeah, that's that's yeah, there's the all streetwear. Who did it well? Yeah. Now there's streetwear. Yeah. yeah. But it's hard to put that streetwear on. Mm. Well, so far, streetwear's only been on the men. But then no. I guess. Is no, it? A few bits. The t-shirts. No, there were the t-shirts. Yeah. No, there were the t-shirts on the women as well. Trousers and yeah. I suppose the stripes. What do you think, Taylor? Not this extreme. Oh, I'm, there's so much to take in. Yeah, there is a lot to take I in. I really like the... So one thing I was trying to work out was, because um, Tishi's always had um, very over, um, sensual and sexual references in a lot of his collections. Yes. I wanted to know how that would marry with something that is quite quintessentially, quintessentially British, mm -hmm. uh, which is normally quite conservative. But I noticed that there's a Mac that's like out of Fred PVC. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. I guess these... That's how he's done it. It's just really interesting, just picking up a little things and yeah, that's that sort of British sleeves as well. Isn't yeah, it? literally, you can imagine. Yeah, sleeves. so hard. And all the, the bodice and kind yeah. of the, un the underwear. Mm. Wow, it's really incredible. He's gone from one statement to another, mm -hmm. right? Well, he actually did what you were saying at the beginning then. Yeah, I was worried for a second. <laughs> yeah. There's actually not that many bags, right? Bags are... They've just been bags, I think, as... Yeah. There's more the accessories, the like, yeah, body yeah, bags literally. and belts and beautiful shoes. That's something Trainers. he's um, renowned for doing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. Mm. He's incorporating accessories in to be part of the clothes, as opposed yeah. to keeping them as separate entities. Which is very Which modern is, yeah. and street. Cool, also, it entices yeah. people more to buy them because they're seeing it as part of an outfit yeah. as opposed to like a separate. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I don't know. No, I, um, I mean, I remember going to Fendi menswear show, and mm -hmm. that was literally every model had like three bags. And I was like, well, um, as we know, bags and shoes, it's like a huge it's revenue. Yeah, right. it's, it's like. And jewelry and all the accessories. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of interesting that there is not that many because yeah. that was also a way, because Burberry is not that renowned for bags, am I right? So, like, you could actually. Do the each bag. You probably will. Well, I think people will go there Look, and they'll the buy the evening, bag anyway. The evening wear is really good. And black. It's incredible Thank also God. how <laughs> it comes at the end in a traditional way yeah. which yeah. we're That's not used to anymore. Yes, yeah, so I'm finding less surprising. Here we go. Um, see, if I was a model, I'd be gutted I wasn't at the end. <laughs> but that one is gorgeous. Yeah, that whole mini look. Oh, so nice. Oh, in the bag. That white shirt that's like a cape in the back is mm. fantastic. But this was really Madame. Yeah. And then he said, OK, let me dress this They'll do the progression, though, won't it? It'll be then. <coughs> it's a huge old bag. Very interesting. I think it was very smartly done. Hmm. I'm with you, though. I think it's a bit too beige. <laughs> it's too much beige for me. Too much beige. At the beginning, for sure. Yeah. But, you know, nothing here is left to the chance. No, yeah. I guess when it's just it's all blocked well together and there's like 30 people just in beige, it looks... When you see it as a... Yeah. It's a lot. But I, I feel like it's li literally the opposite of what we were saying. It's impossible to hate this. Mm. I think there's literally yeah. not a single it's look you would look at it and be like, I hate this. It's like... it's, it's all quite very smart. And an, yeah, overall, it's all quite and an overall kind of feeling is that it's not... It's a positive overall feeling yeah. because... It's very you can't criticise any of the beginning because it's unbelievably well tailored, and then the work at the end is exquisite as well. So you're both sides. Yeah. Although I think you could look at some things and say, "Oh, this is not for me. This is really not my style." Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to happen. People, 
would look at it. And then you would see other just basically yeah. forget the bit which wasn't for you and yeah. just remember the one yeah. you liked. And you in, yeah. but I think this is what Burberry is for. Like what they've delivered is kind of what Burberry as a brand is for. Like it's not to suddenly mm. be this high luxury. Exactly. Thing. It's many it's billions. Kind of, it's doing yeah. what it is. Yeah, the it needs to feed the, many people. Yeah. Accessories are crazy. But yeah, so it's 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 very clever what they've That's done here. An 85 piece, eight, the 85 looks, isn't it? That's it's very clever what they've done here, and, and we're not here to say what we like personally. Mm. We're here to say, yeah. is this right? So do you think is this right for Bur for the new Burberry uh, as a start? I, I, mean, I think I, it will answer all the potential naysayers, or the it, and it will the people that said I was going to come out enjoying it. It's, there were not many naysayers about the, the hiring of Ricardo Tisci. No, 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 but if people, no, sorry, you're not <coughs> going to come out saying, sorry, I'd mm. meant that wrongly. There's not, not, you're not going to have anyone coming out and saying, I'd be surprised if there's people saying I didn't like it. I think there's something like, as you were saying, there's something there for everyone. And what I really like is <coughs> there's non over emphasis on um, theatrics and set. Yeah. I Absolutely, think, the clothes are talking. You know, when we talk about the Chanel show, it's just like traditionally, it's just like spaceships, grocery stores. <laughs> it's like this is, this is really, really nice to see, and it's just as engaging because the emphasis has been put on the clothing as opposed to the set. But as you saying that, the set itself is is beautiful. The quantity of people. I mean, they have one model per, per look. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you get to see it twice. Does it say cow on her jacket? Cow, yeah, I think so. The black with the white. <coughs> I'd, I'd, like, I'd like to know what the words say. There's one of the shirts says um, there's something like, why did they kill Bambi? Or why did you kill Bambi? Oh, really? That'd be pretty. Oh, really? But I, the right I've seen the his old collection, yeah, which yeah. Bambi, you think? I've seen more the, the previous check than the new one. Yeah, much more. Am I wrong? Yeah. I think it's probably just slowly going to start to integrate it. But that's why we've seen it so much online and mm. around town. <laughs> where, where it has been used, it hasn't looked too overbearing, because when you see it, mm. you know, it, up till now, when you see it, it looks quite clunky and heavy, but it didn't look... Because it, it was in a muted grey, wasn't it? Yeah, it was in the nice. jacket. Yeah, it was on a, on a scarf as yeah. well, I think. But I feel like, why would you drop the check if you can kind of have both? And also, it's so recognisable for people who are not really that's familiar a good with point. the brand. Why would you drop why it when you can have both? <laughs> But actually, I wasn't expecting it. I thought it was like a la Hedy Slimane, you know, a real cut mm. of the past. Mm. And actually, it's not at all, because there's so much of Burberry as we've known it and Burberry from, mm. well, I, su I suppose when past. you look at a previous, like Gucci, it's always taken the identity of the creator, director, and designer. Whereas with Burberry, it always, you, only, you always have that reference. Mm. Because all the designers say of Gucci have been, so, been quite different. Yeah, but, and, but yet, Alessandro has been at Gucci for 17 years before being creative director, so he knows the company and the brand probably better than any newcomer. Mm. And that's why he can use some codes of the brand Without so it. smartly, because some mm. stuff is done before, you know. Mm. While Ricardo, not only is very new to Burberry, but also is that. new to the UK. Well, he studied here and he loves London, but but he's Italian, he worked in Paris, he's, you know, it's sort of, very different. I was sort of wondering how much, because it is, a, you know, it's a British brand, I was sort of wondering how much it even matters what British people think about it anymore, like how much of their market is here. Oh, in that sense, financially, I don't think it's a big market. Yeah, so it's quite, quite interesting, because I was kind of thinking, you know, having such an international team behind such a British brand might be weird, but actually maybe it's more interesting because they have an exterior take on what Britishness is. Yeah. I was is thinking better. about, sorry. No, go ahead. I was thinking about it a lot, actually, because we've seen a lot of, like, these constructed national identities, like, let's say, Gosha's picture of Russia, yeah. or, like, uh, a lot of young designers work with their national heritage, mm -hmm. and actually, I'm quite positively surprised that there's not of not much of this constructed Britishness because if you think of Britishness as a cultural expert, foreigners like it much better than British people yeah, themselves. Uh, but on the other hand, it's also politically problematic these days because of the whole Brexit and rise on nationalism and stuff. So it's actually good that it's not yeah, actually I, that British. And if you think, if yeah, you remember yeah, Burberry me, I mean, it doesn't look that British it's to a, me. There's a healthy side to that as well. I think it was just yeah. interesting, like in the last sort of year we had 
culturally big things like Dunkirk and that Churchill film Darkest Hour, which yeah. are sort of, they're not jingoistic, Jim. Yeah. It's sort of more of a like, well, we're all, this is all happening, so let's go. Hello, kind of The Crown, Downton Abbey. No, yeah. I know, I know. Britain has never been more in trend yeah. abroad. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's what I was going to say, yeah. you know, and so instead of using the, the codes that they have been used by Burberry with, you know, at, at the end of every show it was raining, do you remember? Mm. Outside, and everybody came out with an umbrella and all those cliché. Now it's move on to a different kind of Britishness, but there's nothing trendier than the yeah. British accent but also, and the British But also, like, how would you, but how would, what would you think if this cliches came from a non-British person? I think that's also interesting because I think he had to yeah, be quite it wouldn't careful be, it would about, be, yeah, to be it quite would be appropriation. About, uh, yeah, but I mean, appropriation or not, he had to be, I think, quite careful with how he tells the story. Being British is quite a specific thing. So when people say, you know, what does it mean to be British or what's our national character, British people are dreadful at summarising that. So mm. it might be quite nice to have someone with an exterior view who can just sort of summarise it. In no, we're just own. two foreigners. I mean, these are your own British, yeah, I mean, so we, can't, <laughs> we can't win this one. Stay there with minority. Did someone... Uh, take the time to read a little yeah. bit what yeah. they so said. So it's a what celebration of culture, traditions and codes at the Fashion House. Mm. Oh, so it's yeah. celebrating yeah. Burberry. Yeah. The melting pot of London, I think he references. And the eclecticism that makes up the beautifully diverse United Kingdom. It's called, the collection is called Kingdom. Mm. Trench coats and car coats. Can we see, do, do they have the credits at the end of the press release? Please. Music design exclusive for the show by Robert Na Naja. No. Massive Attack, da -da -da. Hair and Makeup, Pat and Guido. Who styled it? Probably no one. <laughs> Just do it him. It's too much work for one man. Well, the team then. Yeah. Mm. Really? They would announce it if there was well, a well, stylist. They would, they would probably yeah. say it. Mm. It's strange well, the name of a stylist is not really attached yeah. to this. Yeah, it is a bit strange. So, I don't think so there is one then. Are we excited about really, this? Yeah, I, I, think, I think it was quite, it was a lot to take in because you had, you saw the same look about four times because the way the film yeah. did, so you, yeah. it was hard to get the narrative. And I think for quite a while, we we're all probably quite shocked that we had the traditional Burberry colours and the late, very feminine and the very Madame silhouettes. And so then by the time all the really interesting, the stuff that we hoped would come, we were probably, it was just, it was quite hard to visually say. I think it's, I, I mean, all those gold details. It's also on respectful those, just, of a brand that has been around long and of probably Christopher who's been there many years and done a great job. And I love that because mm -hmm. one thing for which uh, Hedy is criticised is that he comes and he, you know, the, like the, the, mm -hmm. the Instagram of Celine is gone. Everything is like, it didn't exist. You know, I love Hedy's work, but in that is a little bit, do you think it's well, Ricardo didn't do it like this. He did a new logo and everything, but then now he's showing respect, which yeah. is always good. And I, yeah, and I think that it's, that's the part which is going to allow the, the positive. So everyone's going to feel really positive when you go and buy this now because it comes from a very good place as opposed to something of controversy. So I think people are going to be more, I don't know, I think it must be better for business. Well, well, I, I it's not that mm -hmm. Laurent didn't do well with mm -hmm. any, so... No, but I'm saying if you come out feeling more positive about something, yeah. that's always a better... Taylor? I think I'm, I'm actually interested to go online, even if it's just to check the prices, but just to see what was available, because... Mm. Everything hit. If you watch that show, and, like, a few things might stick in your mind, but there is so much to it. You could spend hours, days, just, like, going through all of it. And I'm the sort of person that likes to do that. I like to be able to look at things and be able to say, okay, I can see the reference point here, I can see that and that. So I, like, he's got my attention, he's got me clicking on his swipe up link to go yeah. and check the online store. Yeah. And I think that's exactly what we wanted to do. And even if you look at the strategy behind the way that show was set up, so, you know, you're talking about like, almost not like an anti-climax, but something to kind of make you think, oh, well, yeah. it's the last thing we expected, not in a good way. I think anti-climax is the right word. And then you bring that out and it's like, at the end of it, you're just like, that was incredible. Yeah, like, because he, you said I'm overwhelmed, and then suddenly he, min he knew. And then suddenly sorry, came. And, then, so, yeah. and that was very smart. And I also think, you know, when at the beginning we were thinking about the the, the Gucci model. I mean, Alessandro put 110 looks on every catwalk, and they go from a pinstripe suit on a woman to a crazy yellow fake mink. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So. 
you know, there is a lot. It's a big brand, it's a billion worth brand, and so it needs to please many people. Yeah, and I think it's sort of every level, level that it needs to please people, it seems to have hit the right note. So, you know, the sort of more streetwear stuff and the more traditional stuff, there's no, there's no bits that I thought, oh, that's a bad call. It all seems like a fairly sensible sort of... Yeah, there were no bad calls, absolutely. There's also a lot of pressure financially. Burberry is a publicly traded company to... Yeah. You know, it's been stock, through a lot stock, stock, market, stock market shut now, but tomorrow morning it'll be really interesting to see how it performs, or even pre-market, see how it performs overnight. Once the, I don't think there'll be any criticism. Once the feedback comes in, absolutely. Um, and I think they definitely took that into mind, and I think that this has just literally been like a perfect moment for him to arrive here and do what he's done. You know, from the way the show was set up to the way that he's manipulated Burberry, his own Instagram to sell the product and. Mm -hmm. You know, what's going on culturally and socially at the moment, the way we consume goods, it all seems like it's just perfect. And it's all been taken into account by, I want to say, Gubetti. And he's understood that and implemented a plan. And if it's going to continue to be like this, I can only see Burberry like succeeding. Success mm. after Coming success. Coming back. Success. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think it's quite close to the essence of Burberry as a product based brand, essentially. Because if you think about what do you go to Burberry for, you go to buy a trench coat, you go to buy something kind of. I don't know, it's, to me, it's always been that. Product as opposed to as brand, yeah. you mean? Yeah, it's more like it's not really about the story, it's more about the garment, because it's all the whole identity of a brand is built around the trench coat, if you think of that, or around the check, or around something which is quite tangible. Yeah. So I think that follows through with that, with the fact that it's just tangible, nice pieces which can travel to ma into many contexts, which can end up in very, a lot of different wardrobes, styled very differently if you take it apart. But then on the other hand, now that I'm thinking that I would have to review this show, I would be <laughs> freaked out because the, what is the one There's story? Yeah. What is it the one story I'm going to tell through this? It's going to be a bit difficult because I would have to look through all of this uh, multiple looks. I would have to look at everything they created around it to basically get to some kind of essence, which I don't really get. Uh, I'm not really getting it yet, to be honest. Do you think that's partly the set designers? You know what you were saying about it being a really clean set. It didn't give anything yeah. away. Until, you know, if it's called Kingdom, there's nothing about any of the art direction of it the set. It was very sterile. It was very... I liked it, but it doesn't help with... Did anyone look at that and think that it had, like, in terms of set design, it, looked, it reminded me of, like, the inside of, like, a, a Japanese, Japanese home? Yeah, yeah. And for me, that's just, I, I, I don't see yeah. But did you, did you go and see the new Regent Street store? No, did you I see images online? Can we see some violet? Because it's much warmer, so I was expecting something to, yeah, because they actually, redo the stores, which yeah. is a huge amount of money. It was actually quite so cool that it, it was this uh, post uh, sorting center, former royal uh, post sorting center. Th that fact is actually quite cool, but, yeah, but it they, didn't really translate no, in the set. Because no. it's a, but maybe yeah. if you arrive, if you see that what it was from the outside, maybe it was more cool. of an empty shell for them to dress the way they wanted, because it's very different than mm -hmm. what it looked here. We saw some images of the new store. I think they were on, on Ricardo's Instagram, if I'm not mistaken there. Um, you see what I mean? Mm. It's yeah. warmer, there's mm. woods and yeah. there's a lot of beige again. Yeah. <laughs> but that store used to be a cinema, was it? What used, like the main, the flagship store or something? Regent Street one. Yeah. Yeah, Regent Street. What did you say, that story? It used to be a cinema or something. Okay. So maybe they just looked into what it looked like originally and recreated okay. some of it. No, it's true, but here it reminds me of the yeah. set of the It reminds me of like every time you'd walk off the stairs into like a wardrobe and if it was like, like you're saying, like very homely and warm as opposed the to like bears. a store. Like Those are teddy bears. The bears. Be bear, be bears. Mm. The bears. <laughs> See, the check, but this is, yeah. Well, this is still the old collection, so. Well, so can we have a look here we are. What do we want to see? I just want to see if we could get the images of the show, you know, how. It's a bit long, Maybe. then we're coming up to an hour, okay. so I don't want to disappoint anybody, but we're going we'll to do it oh. to yeah. of our audience. <laughs> we can continue. So about the there are about, there are about 100. <laughs> but um, we, uh, yeah, I mean, it, as, as you all said, there was a lot to take in. I think the idea is that it probably strategically was a very, very good move. We haven't seen yet his signature completely, but it will grow in us by being able to look at images and maybe even go in a few months or maybe earlier, depending on the drops, and go and see the actual product. So I think it deserves a little bit of an applaud. I agree. Ricardo, right, does it? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Thank you.